It looks like Never Lucky, they're going to be bringing in a Wind Walker Death Knight Mistweaver composition. I, I'm not sure how I like this. I feel like Method Orange, they're going to still have a clear mana advantage with Trill on that Demon Hunter. We'll just have to see exactly what Never Lucky can get done as it looks like Mez is the main focus point for them. Very early uh -oh. on, getting bursted down. Sidu, you have to, <laughs> you can't make it be that close of a call. We've seen a lot of pressure from Windwalker Death Knight setups uh, onto these Death Knights, and Sidu has sort of struggled with the single target dealing to keep them alive. Yeah, definitely going to be difficult for Sidu. I'm curious to see. Kolo is running grapple weapon, so he can remove Mez's weapon and deny Death Strike. Currently active right now with three seconds remaining. Mez cannot Death Strike. Zach trying to amplify the damage with that Fist of Fury and really put some pressure down. Gripping Sidu in for a double stun. Mez decides to respect the push, trading Icebound Fortitude, but even still starting to falter. Yeah, a lot of damage. Icebound Fortitude is going to fade. Mez is getting lower and lower. Sidu has to trade out the Spearling Totem. Overlap with his Ascendance. The pressure from Never Lucky is immense. Method Orange, I can easily see them following. Sidu has to already use his Trinket. Any more crowd control on Sidu, Mez could easily fall, and they're going to have to play very careful. I mean, since those Bonded Soul healing changes, a lot of healing has been removed from the arena in general, and you can see the healers trying to readjust to that difference here in game number one. Sidu falling heavy, heavily behind, even with Mez respecting the damage and trading quite efficiently. Ended up having to use most of their defensive arsenal just to stay alive, and even still getting pressured to this point. Mez has been unable to use runic power on basically anything but Death Strike to stay alive, whereas Valido is having a lot easier of a time. But Trill is establishing a lead, unless Mez can just go down grapple in that weapon. grapple weapon, denying the Death Strike. Darkness, if he gets a little bit unlucky, he may go down through it. They managed to stay alive, but the pressure is immense. The only thing not going for Never Lucky is their mana, and of course Trill is building that lead. When you play against Trill, you are on a timer, no questions about it. Mez and Sidu, they have to stay alive by Trill enough time to completely get Colo out of mana, and he's close, but Mez still in a lot of trouble. Really doesn't have too much left to work with. Uses the Asphyxiate on Zack to deny the Fist of Fury damage. If they can consistently lock that down, Mez might be able to survive, but low. Sidu struggling to stay alive. Asphyxiate stun on to Sidu. Mez looking to redirect some of that damage with the Anti-Magic Shell. Still just kiting away. The oh! Gets used. Mez has no healing. The grapple weapon coming in huge for Colo. Do they have the damage to close this game out? Mez holding on by a thread. Sidu doing everything he can, looking for the heals. Imprisonment. It looks like Trill coming back to back up Mez, but Mez still not out of it. Colo just needs to go in aggressive and find the kill within this little window. He's almost out of mana. He has no other choice but to go for aggression, and maybe they take him out. They do. Never lucky. Maybe lucky here in game number one. I definitely don't think Method Orange were ready for that. Favorite teams to actually make that jump into that fourth position to make it to land. And you're starting to see why. This is a team that has never been scared to multi-class, never been scared to try new things. And by George, it seems like they have found an answer. Will Method Orange be able to return pressure this time around? Are we going to see Mez be the tastiest morsel that we ever have seen? Yep, Sidu gets away from that death grip of Valido. Valido looking for a potential interrupt as he trinkets out of the hex and asphyxiate onto Sidu. Good pressure on Mez already, but this is already a way better start for Method Orange. Mez has been able to stabilize. Then this has sort of turned into a 2v2 and a 1v1 situation. Colo now with the way the crane going to be moving forward, trying to add that extra damage onto Mez, but Sidu playing so far back preemptively healing with the healing waves and this is like what this is kind of what we talked about is method orange they're respecting the damage a lot more trading out earlier on trills already used his darkness he does not want mez to fall behind yes he just had a game to readjust he's going to be turreting out healing waves max distance but he's caught in crowd control is never lucky try to lead the charge i do believe that mez has opted to drop icebound fortitude for Lichborn, so he can more frequently trade a defensive cooldown, but it's one that he cannot activate in a stun, so he needs to be careful as he doesn't have Gladiator's Medallion to access that Lichborn ability. In the meantime, pressure is swinging in favor of Method Orange. Of course, Trill's main objective to be nailing these imprisonments into Mana Rifts, currently nailing one right now onto Colo. Colo nine seconds away from away. The Crane looking to make a push with that grapple weapon. Good cross crowd control by Never Lucky. They've definitely come prepared here in the upper bracket, looking to tear apart and try and overthrow Storm's fourth place position in points. Yep, Mez manages to get topped off. All three members have never lucky low. Colo responds with the way of the crane, immediately topping everyone and trying to add that little bit of extra damage. Sidu does respond with the Earthen Shield Totem, but with the beautiful Ring of Peace, Mez potentially could be knocked out of that, but no, he's not going anywhere with the Lichborn. I think he's immune to those knockback effects, so 
Unfortunately, that counter from Zach isn't going to be doing much to Mez, and he's able to comfortably sit in the defensive wall of CD's Earthen Shield Totem. Yeah, good defense by Method Orange overall. CD is expending a lot more mana in this game. He knows he's going to have the lead. He just needs to stabilize Mez and keep him topped off and has readjusted quite well here in game number two against Never Lucky. But of course, Colo is going to be the X Factor. He's on the clock. He has to set up the team with grapple weapons and wave the crane pushes before he's burned out on mana. Currently in engaging in an attack right now. Mez exchanges defensive cooldowns with that anti-magic shield. Not going to be the most potent against two monks. Colo starting to fall behind. The pressure starting to go in favor of Method Orange. Bringing a piece to protect Colo. He has to fake cast multiple ranged interrupts. He's going to duck around the corner on the balcony, maybe? No, he goes for the way of the crane. Colo says, this is it. We got to get a kill. I'm out of mana. Yeah, and I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Once again, Sidu deflects with the Earthen Shield Totem. Mez looking to redirect his damage onto Colo. Colo could be in some trouble here. Almost completely tapped on mana. Way of the Crane is going to fade shortly. Life Cocoon, the last line of defense to keep Colo alive, but Trill in hot pursuit. Mez has to just stay alive a little bit longer. Sidu trades out his trinket, still has the Spirit Link Totem if he really needs it. Mez could be a little bit vulnerable here, but never lucky. They're running out of time quickly. They actually got the Spirit Link Totem. This could be a race to the finish. Mez is still getting pressured even without Colo's assistance. That next grapple weapon, Mez down at half. No trade for five. Managing to stay alive anyway. CD expending a lot of mana to recover through that. That needed to be the kill for Colo. I mean, look at his mana. It is not looking good. His health is down to half. Mez is building pressure onto the two other targets as well. Trill needs to try and solo Colo before Mez goes down. CD is almost tapped now. He's caught into a stun. Do they have a paralysis out of this leg sweep is the real question. Doesn't look like it. CD activating that Maledict, trying to really lead the charge for the team. Colo's falling behind. He's just begging for that mana T to come off cooldown so he can hopefully get enough mana for one more way of the crane because they're going to need it to try and get a kill, I think. They have the life cocoon, but Colo completely tapped on mana, activating every man for himself to get out of that final stun. He wants to hold on to this last little bit of mana. In desperation, the life cocoon comes out from Colo to keep himself alive. Sidu's mana now not looking great. This is still anyone's game, but Mez still has the safety of Trill's darkness if they really need it. Method Orange is looking really good here. Yeah, it's looking better and better for Method Orange. Colo doing his best to heal with nothing. Grapple weapon attempt here. There's no defense for Mez. Darkness is the last thing. Trill needs to be in position. He moves over. He doesn't trade, and then he leaves Mez behind. This could be dangerous. Trill trying to get aggressive, but leaving Mez behind. Maybe he's fine. Doesn't look like he needs it just yet. Trill just trying to end the game. Colo doing everything he can to stay alive with basically no mana left, doing phenomenally. Bolito and Zach supporting themselves quite effectively as well. Colo kiting around the map, finally getting caught in a stun. Mez still being pressured, and Sidu is suddenly out of mana as well. This is going to be a race to the finish. Yeah, Colo low. He manages to escape with a cheat torpedo. Trill in hot pursuit. Mez left all alone. Sidu in a leg sweep. Anti Magic Cell looking to deny. Trill cannot leave Mez again without that darkness. He wants to be able to trade a little bit here. Colo still left out of mana, but Trill wants to make sure he's not able to comfortably regenerate at any point. Colo actually using his grapple weapon onto Trill, so now Mez is going to be feeling very comfortable to get those death strikes off in order to survive. Touch of death. Big burst damage once again. Touch of death goes off from Zach. Mez still in critical condition here at 50% health. Darkness gets traded out, but after that, Method Orange could be in a lot of trouble. They've got crowd control on the c -Doo. Never Lucky could be moving to match point. There's nothing left for Mez. He's just getting destroyed by Never Lucky. Barely hanging on. c gets interrupted. Looking for a Hex. Not able to find that. Colo is basically still tapped on mana, but Mez is still low. c tapped on mana, and Mez is going to fall first. Never Lucky put Method Orange on match point. Uh, <laughs> same target to try to actually take someone down. We've talked about a lot of different things. We've talked about all of the reasons that Never Lucky doesn't need luck on their side. They just need to keep on going for the plan that they have had. But you need to think about how much this really does shake up North America if we send Method Orange down to that lower bracket. You thought that they were safe in third place. You thought that they were safe to go to land. Colo is looking to prove you wrong. Yep, Colo definitely out for vengeance here against his former teammates, Mez and Trill. It's been a long time coming, but he's got the best opportunity he's ever had to try and smack him down to the lower bracket. Only needed one more win Ooh. on the board. They're actually going for Sidu, trying to exploit that weakness potentially of it being his alternate healer. They're really cooking up a lot of pressure. Let's see how he deals with it. Yeah, Sidu cutting away right now in Travel 4, managing to get away. And one of the problems we're sitting on Sidu for a long time is it allows Mez to consistently spam out the chain of ice and it can become difficult eventually for the Windwalker Monk
have to stay on target. Trill still just going to be sitting on Colo, trying to run him out of mana as soon as possible. Sidu trades out basically everything. He's already used his trinket. Now Iron Bark, Bark Skin as well, not available. If they can get another stun on Sidu, I can easily see him falling. Ring of Peace pinning Sidu back into the opposing team as he tries to jump to safety. No death grip for Valido. Zach and Valido getting peeled away by Mez. Sidu makes his getaway. Colo rolls in. Maybe he's going to hold Sidu down because, I mean, 15 more seconds on that Bark Skin. If Sidu gets stunned out of bear form, he could easily die. He gets into bear form right before that stun. They still have darkness to rely on. It's unlikely that we see Sidu go down, but the pressure is mounting. It's all on Sidu's shoulders to try and keep his team in the upper bracket. Yet Zach commits the touch of karma. They're looking to go all in, as well as the way of the crane from Colo to top off his team. Sidu in a lot of trouble. He has the iron bark. Is he going to trade it out? They're all over him. Can he get away? He's in bear form, cutting through a lot of this damage. Mez trying to do everything he can. Now a full stun on Sidu outside of bear form, but with that iron bark, he should be sitting quite comfortably. Yep, that mana lead establishing itself. Method Orange just have to stall and stay alive, but will they be able to? Never Lucky are relentless in their assaults. These rings of peace have been perfect, pulling Sidu back into the team and allowing all three members of Never Lucky to connect, and it's all about uptime and staying on target, but a triple stun secured for Trill. The counter pressure will be high for Method Orange as the opposing team stacks up as well. We see multiple players low on health. Colo with not much mana remaining, not many defense as well for Zach. How is he going to make it out of this? He needs to abort. He ports, but he ports in line of sight. Trill moves over, not able to take him down. Colo recovers. He's got one one more wave of the crane left in the bank. This wave of the crane needs to get a kill, but it would be a throw for Method Orange to go down to it. And yeah, nicely done by Mez to keep him alive. Zach all over has to ride the wind available for Valido and Colo. It's all three members looking to take down Sidu. It is do or die for Never Lucky. They have to get a kill here with this final push. Imprisonment on Colo denies a lot of his damage. Sidu in bear form with the preemptive iron bar. Can he survive? He has a few more oh, seconds. Oh, oh. Darkness gets Ring of peace. Out. Ring of peace. Sidu's still in a lot of trouble. Barkskin is looking to get away. Another ring of peace to Nice. Sidu has to hold on just a little bit longer. Does he manage to escape and get away? Zach there to reconnect with the touch of death. Sidu's so scared at this point. I mean, he could easily fall at any point. That touch of death is about to explode. It's going to do huge damage. Ooh. Colo's done it. Colo has done it. Never lucky. Going to be 3 owing the reigning BlizzCon champions, Method Orange. Colo is going to be able to pull Sidu apart. The man that took his spot with his former teammates. Colo is going to stay in the top side of the bracket. The reigning blitz. Method Orange potentially, but now we're gonna see Rub Cub once again coming out on the Paladin. Let's see what he's able to get done here. Mew Mew Kitty Cats. Yeah, I actually don't mind this composition from the boys. Jamili actually locking in the Arcane Mage, and I think the Demon Hunter is a little bit better of an answer than that Death Knight. He has so much mobility, the range interrupt, he's really going to be able to slow down Jamili if he has to in this matchup. I'm very curious to see how Rub Cub performs here, going back to the bread and butter, that Rogue Mage Paladin that we know and love from the former team of the Rejects, now Mew Mew Kitty Cats here. Game one, lower bracket, the boys off the back of a 2-3 loss to the Super Frogs. Definitely might be feeling some pain from that loss, but bringing in Thugonomics, seeing his debut with that Demon Hunter here today. That Mana Rift is going to be super effective. Chun-Li getting isolated and bursted down. Multiple defensive cooldowns pulled from the boys early on, and this Mage Rogue is definitely putting up the pressure. Chun-Li's used everything. The boys, they don't have a single defensive cooldown left besides the darkness. Chun-Li still having to run away as all three members of M2KC charging in. Kidney shot now uh, secured on Chun-Li with the smoke bomb. Kleptomania. Well then. And that's it. Well met. M2KC, <laughs> immense pressure. The Most is over Seth. Usually we see this composition with a Windwalker from the Mew Mew Kitty Cats, but now they are playing it with a Rogue, and it looks even better. Yeah, I, I mean, the last Paladin that we saw grab a win was Zack, and he was playing Monk. We don't see many Paladins here. Rub Cub is going to be that last shining light. Already one win for M2KC. Will they be able to get on match point against the boys? You see Rub Cub getting stunned up by the team of the boys curious if uh, Thugonomics is actually running mana rift in this build he's definitely not really been one to enjoy that strategy overall and he actually is not running the mana rift so Thugonomics and Chun-Li are going to be more focused on burst windows and setup opportunities they don't have that guaranteed mana victory and right now Thugonomics is falling behind exchanging blur for this initial attack counterspell also nailed by Jamile putting Thugonomics further behind and likely going to cost them 
an iron bark here if the spell steals can come in and steal some of those heal over time effects greg is spending a lot of time in cat form a little bit disrespectful but does manage to stabilize i love the swaps that are happening right now from m2kc very important again this wrestler druid meta that you're switching targets frequently yeah definitely really important one thing to note as well for mew mew kitty cats the reason they're in the lower bracket right now is they had a close series against the boys earlier on in this tournament it was a 3-2 series and that's what sent them there so picking up that first win in this matchup obviously going to be very important for m2kc Really getting targeted down right now. They're trying to slow him down just a little bit, but I know Thugonomics might not like the playstyle of Mana Rift, but that definitely plays into one of the win conditions the boys have available. And without that talent, I feel like the boys are potentially throwing away a, a huge opportunity. We know Thugonomics for big Chaos Bolts. He loves just getting aggressive and doing tons of damage, so it's not surprising to me that he refuses to play that stall-based tactic Demon Hunter play. He's never done that. He's always been the Fel Barrage Demon Hunter, although in this case, Fel Barrage not going to be a viable option, but always about first <laughs> and coordinating with Chun-Li in the past, so it's not surprising to see him go for this aggressive strategy. But when facing a Paladin, I, I agree mana rift would just secure you the game into the late stages so even though you don't burst down a target you can just win on mana jamelia has been nailing multiple counter spells that blue icon next to gareki means he can't heal while it is up there on the screen unfortunately no damage to follow it up the pressure from m2k is much lower this time around they're playing it more patiently they've held on to arcane power now pulling the trigger on vendetta dropping down a smoke bomb Chun-Li immediately responds. Thugonomics backs them up, and now Roasties is the one falling behind. They switch to Jamili after evasion is activated. Pressure on two points. Jamili gets knocked down out of line of sight, able to blink back to Rub Cub's side. Gorecki now moving across the map to get to the boxes, so he doesn't need to deal with Rub Cub. Rub Cub sees him trying to escape in hot pursuit, looking likely for a hammer of justice. Rub Cub chasing Gorecki, but Gorecki restyles. Rub Cub trinkets and responds. Immediately iron barks, but overlaps with a touch of Kara. I think it was a necessary overlap. Nice sap out of the hammer of justice there by Roasties as they look to close this game out on map number two. Triple stun by Thugonomics, stalls it out. Darkness saves the day, but now having burned through basically every major defensive cooldown, Chun-Li needs to be careful. Yeah, he definitely does. And Roasties, or Serge Millie, still has the arcane power available. Gorecki with really no response. But M2KC, although they had a nice setup, they are falling a little bit behind here. Rub Cub has to play catch up. Now full bash secured onto Jamili. This could be his first and potentially only ice block of the game. Greater invisibility, going to be trying to stall that out. But unfortunately, now overlapped with the ice block. Jamili does not have many defensives left in order to survive. And things are starting to really stabilize here for the boys. Yeah, the boys have that mana advantage, which is what we expect with the Druid versus Paladin matchup. Let's see, they've got the ice block out of the way. Roasties is an exposed target. It's really not looking too good for M2KC right now, and they're in desperation. They go for a swap on Gorecki. With that Feral Affinity, I'm surprised that they haven't attempted this sooner. You can definitely burst him down. Huge damage, Ring of Peace, will that be enough to stabilize? I would just like to see them train Gorecki now for the rest of the game. Spam spell steal and just finish him off. Really punish that Feral Affinity. He definitely can. It's Rogue Mains are trying to stay on target. Gorecki doing everything he can. Placing that efflorescence, that green circle. Cannot be spell stolen. Trying to access as many as heal over time effects as possible. Managing to escape. But one more swap to him. And they could close the game out. They don't have much time to do it, though. Yeah, but Roasties does have the Vendetta, so if they can find that swap, they can definitely close out the game. Oh. Now into a Polymorph, Jamili getting low. Rub has, has to keep him alive. He still has his Divine Shield, but may not have the healing. Ultimate Sacrifice going to be used to keep Jamili alive. Roasties looking to reconnect onto Gorecki, but you can see Chun-Li, he's playing a solid defense, making sure him and Gorecki are staying together in this situation. Roasties gets the full kidney shot, but Jamili's not there to really get any damage rolling. Unfortunately, that kill attempt was wasted by M2KC. Oh. Now Rub Cup potentially completely out of mana. Jamili still getting roast taken down. Uh, has to activate the temporal shield as he's kiting away, but now it just seems like M2KC, they're not confident in pushing in. Jamili doesn't have the defensive abilities he really needs to stay alive, and they're just not getting a coordinated assault against the boys. I mean, there's no window. It was lost. They needed to kill Gorecki on that last push. Now all defense available. I guess they've managed to now get the Gliders Medallion. Roasty is getting hit. And, I mean, it's do or die. They have to kill Gorecki. It's the only option, and I'm sure that Gorecki knows that. He's just going to max out his heal over time effects, stay out of line of sight, and it's unlikely that Roasty can solo him. Jamili looking to go down here in game number two as the boys bite back. The boys are going to be able to turn. Imp is going to be able to fish up a win. The boys are M2KC. Whoever does get this one finds themselves on match point. 
right, Rub Cubs all in, and game one got them a win on the board, but now the boys are back in town, and their defense looks solid in game number two <laughs> as they tie this series up one-to-one. -one. This is an elimination round, best of five. Right now, the boys are looking to try and stay alive in the tournament so that they can keep their first-place position, which is tied with the Super Frogs, whereas M2KC need to battle it out for that fourth-place spot, and there's really a lot of teams gunning for it, and there's no space, really. They need a good performance. They look solid in game one. They're looking solid here in game three, forcing multiple defensive cooldowns early on for the boys. Yeah, but Chun-Li has managed to stay on target, and he still has that touch of karma. This needs to be really careful, because like we kind of talked about, the Blessing oh. Protection counters that. Chun-Li getting low. Darkness gets traded out by Thugonomics very early on. The boys do not want to fall behind. And I like the fact that they are respecting these offensive cooldowns coming in from M2KC. And the boys are going to be completely healthier. Gorecki actually, though, he's playing relentless, so he's caught into this blind, but it doesn't look like there's any real opportunity, a follow-up sap, but with Chun Li out of line of sight, I think he should be able to survive. Finally, Rosies manages to secure the kidney shot. Chun Li trades out the touch of karma, but immediately line of sights, and I like that play. Blessing of protection does get used. Now Chun Li just on the run. Yeah, he's focusing much more on defense this time around, allowing Gorecki to breathe, and with that relentless pick, crowd control will be reduced more significantly throughout the match, and as long as Chun Li can kite and avoid damage during that critical blind moment, then the boys have more opportunities to avoid crowd control as a result. Jamili falling behind. Oh, that imprisonment one second away by Thugonomics, a misfire. That could have been crucial in getting in an ice block. Uh, which definitely doesn't want to be looking to make a mistake like that again. Mana actually ahead for Rub Cup, which is surprising, and this could be due to the focus growth changes, with Jamili mashing out so many spell steals. Well, it's just a lot of pressure on Chun Li, and I really like them going after him instead, but Jamili could be in some trouble. Chun-Li forced to use this Transcendence to get behind the pillar and to run away, just trying to avoid damage at all costs. I really feel like Chun-Li is the only viable kill target here for Mew Mew Kitty Cats. Rosie's forced to trade out the Evasion and Faint as they make a swap on him. Thugonomics just looking to create huge pressure for his team. Jamili finally left alone in order to get some damage out, but Chun-Li wants to shut that down. Goreki moving in, looking for some damage, finds a bash onto Jamili, now a vulnerable target. But like you said, Sid, with Rub Cub still having a mana lead, Yumi Mew Kitty Cats are still in this. Yeah, the swapping, the spell steals, this Arcane Mage from Jamili is definitely an X Factor in the tournament. Cross crowd control initiation, it looks good. Eight seconds away from that touch of Karma. It's a race to the finish. No Glarious Medallion for Gorecki. Chun-Li needs to run, ducking for cover. Roasty's in hot pursuit, though. Paralysis by Chun-Li. Not going to set up with a leg sweep. Jamili blinks into the fight, looking to try and finish the job. Rub Cub with still a mana lead at this point. Chun-Li has trades. I don't believe there is a Blessing of Protection. There may be one more left for Rub Cub. We'll have to wait and see. Jamili is definitely ahead on cooldowns. They're ahead of mana. Nice polymorph attempt here by Jamili uh -oh. as they look to close. Blessing of Protection immediately removes it, and M2KC snipe out game three. We got to start calling them the Mew Mew. Play the Fire Mage assassination. They've tried all these different things, and now they seem to have something that uh, kind of works here for them. But I think the boys, they should look maybe to get Smexin in instead of Chun Li and play the DK DH, uh, similar to what we see from Method Black. It's, it removes a lot of that uh, weakness, essentially, of having that Windwalker uh, with who is relying on the Touch of Karma, which can be Blessing of Protected away. Yeah, and ultimately now we have our underdogs trying to be cast amongst the pigeons, not only on hook point, but throughout the entire bracket. If we see the Mew Mew Kitty Cats manage to pull off a victory here, it will be felt throughout the entire region th through this tournament and the standings. The boys are tied for first place right now, 300 points between the Super Frogs, but they face elimination here and now against M2KC. A lot of the defense has already been cracked as Roasties tries to close this out here and now. Five more seconds. Chun Li retreating away, but Roasties in hot pursuit. Jamili on his back. Blinding light could easily close this fight as they try to reconnect. Rub Cub leads the charge. Adding huge bonus damage to the fight. Greki connects an iron bark, stabilizing Chun Li. For now, it's a close call here on match point for the boys. Yeah, Jamili still finding the damage, and Chun Li in a lot of trouble. He gets caught into the kidney shot. Iron bark's going to fade very shortly. Greki into the hammer of justice once again. Chun Li left all alone. He's trying to kite away, but all three members are on top of him. Transcendence out of line of sight, looking for some vivifies. Gorecki finally manages to connect some more heals. Chun Li stabilizes, but at the expense of basically everything the boys have available. All right, just take a deep breath. <laughs> boys, you guys need to slow down because that was a very close call on match point. And 
this might just be it. Roasty stun locks Chun Li during that touch of death, denying a huge burst window and also amplifying a lot of pressure. But now Chun Li looks to reverse it, crushing out Jamili. A preemptive sacrifice by Rub Cub before Thugonomics crowd control, perfectly timed, denying any sort of damage. Now Chun Li, once again on the run, needs to buy four more seconds for that touch of karma. He's managed to buy the time. He now has that in exchange to stay alive and potentially move this to game number five versus M2KC in the lower bracket. So much on the line between these teams. The boys want to stay in first. M2KC want to crawl into fourth with Storm still in the tournament, holding that fourth place position. They need a good performance. Right now, Roasty's on the back foot, exchanging that evasion to stabilize. Gorecki jumping into the fight, stun locking Jamili, but now Chun Li stun locked in reverse. Gorecki preempts the attack. Activating Iron Bark right before an incoming crowd control, reducing a huge amount of this pressure. Thugonomics tries to back him up, reverse magic, but then walks into a double blinding light. That banks them a touch of karma, and that is the major defensive cooldown for Chun Li now out of the way. And once again, the boys need to be terrified. Yeah, it's overlapped with the fortifying brew from Chun Li, so really not too much left except the diffuse magic, and he's gonna have to save that for some maledicts if M2KC has it available. Full kitty shot, spell steal spam coming in. Chun Li still in a lot of trouble. And if we look at mana, Gureki falling further and further behind. The boys, they need to try to find some pressure, start working through some of these defensives. Jamili now into a leg sweep, but they can get the ice block here. It's going to be huge. One Maledict connects. Rub Cub, can he keep him alive? Rub Cub now into a stun. Good crowd control by Gorecki, managing to find the full cycle and onto Rub Cub. Jamili still just trying to kite away as he blinks and displaces all over the map to avoid some of this damage. Jamili doing a great job right now. Gorecki almost tapped on mana. This new strategy that Rub Cub's team has brought to the table is definitely proving to be effective here against the boys. Roasty's attempting to close. Jamili double blink. Blinks in, he clotheslines Gorecki with a polymark. Chun Li needs to survive on his own, kiting across the map. Roasty sprinting after him. Jamili looking to lock down Gorecki, gets denied by Thugonomics. Good backup, but Roasty's is one on one in Chun Li. Chun Li taking the better end of that exchange. Well timed Turbo Fist, but then Gorecki jumps into the fight and reverses with huge damage. The boys tie it up to game five. This time the boys are going to be able to smash the kitty cat. Underway, we jump in as soon as the gates open. Who is going to move forward? Who is going to get eliminated? on Ruins of Lordaeron. Well, Ruins of Lordaeron, as it is a cemetery, would be a fitting final resting place. And the boys are bringing intensity here, unrelenting on this composition. But so far, M2KC get the initial attack. They go for the all-in. They remove the touch of karma. chun -Li desperately escapes to safety. Grecki breaks out of blind, but they've already burned through lots of their defense, and they're still running low. Yeah, Chun-Li in a lot of trouble. Gladiator safeguard looking to deflect as Chun-Li's pushing in with a touch of death. Jamili did deflect it quite easily with the temporal shield, but Chun-Li could be in a lot of trouble. Now into a full kidney shot. Gorecki, he doesn't have a trinket. Chun-Li doesn't really have any defense. Ah! He's trying to kite away. The darkness gets dropped out by Thugonomics. That's the last line of defense Chun-Li has to survive. Camping through it. Gorecki out of crowd control. Chun-Li should be able to stabilize, but the boys have burned through every single one of their defensives. This is a huge opening for M2KC. This is the performance that we have been waiting to see. Can they take down the boys in epic PvP? VP will be finding out momentarily as Roasty tries to lead the charge, but then they get reversed with a Cyclone under Rub Cup. Jamili now falling behind. The boys battling it back here in game number five. A lot on the line for both sides. This is an elimination game. The loser of this will be out of the tournament, missing out on a huge opportunity. Jamili has to block. Now M2KC tied on cooldowns in that regard. Still anyone's match. Yeah, definitely. Chun Li kiting away preemptively. They got the ice block. That's what they needed. Now they need to survive the next kidney shot. Full hammer of justice secured on a Gorecki. Unfortunately, Jamili not playing Ring of Frost, not able to find the follow-up polymorph. And Chun Li should be completely fine. He has the touch of karma rotating back up. Rosie's now in a stun. Jamili uses the temporal shield. Rough Cub's mana still doing quite well, but Jamili just has been under so much pressure during this game. It's been really struggling for him to. He's been really struggling to find pressure so far in the matchup. Yeah, definitely a lot more focus on Jamili trying to to deny maybe some of the spell steals, but Grecki gets caught. Critical moment, reverse magic, good backup by Thugonomics, but he gets another polymorph. Rub Cup moves in position. Does he have that hammer of justice? Doesn't look to be the case. Mana in favor of Rub Cup, but only slightly. No major lead in that regard. Grecki jumps into the fight, adds some extra damage. We saw him chomp in in that last game, and one big ferocious bite could be good night here. How much longer can Rub Cup keep his team going? Needs to buy at least 12 more seconds. Can he do it? 10 more seconds to that Avenging Wrath. As soon as he has that, his entire team is likely to go back to full health. They'll have a big window to push for major cooldowns. I'd like to see a swap to Gorecki. Just an all-in Hammer Justice kidney shot. 
all in, kill Gorecki. I, I think it would be a wise move, but instead going after Chun-Li, the safe decision. They do manage to preempt two defensive cooldowns. They remove the touch of Karma. Huge overlap oh, from the boys. Nice sap from Rosies on the Gorecki under the hammer of justice, and now Chun-Li in so much trouble. The touch of Karma gets bopped off. Chun-Li looking to run away, trying to kite back to Gorecki. Do they have the heal? Oh. Light comes in. Supernova breaks it. Jamili unfortunately breaks the crowd control, manages to get the polymorph, but that was enough time. Chun-Li got the heal over time effects from Gorecki. He managed to stabilize them. Now things are looking good for the boys. They've survived the all-ins here. The boys are starting to make it out to the other side. Jamili's getting pressured. Rub Cub on the ropes. Ultimate sacrifice, redirecting damage to himself so that Jamili can stay in the fight. But now Rub Cub's even falling behind to that redirected pressure. Roasties is dipping low as well. It's not looking good. M2KC, they have to do something and they have to do it now. They don't have much time left. Grecki in the back line just needs to play far away from Rub Cub. He sneaks maybe into stealth. He's looking to chomp. Touch of Death is ticking away onto Jamili. Will it be enough to take him down? With that temporal shield, Jamili bounces back into the fight, taking control of Duganamas with the polymorph. Gorecki overextends to dispel it. Rub Cup might capitalize on that. chun -Li slows and stalls the Hammer of Justice. This next crowd control could close the game for either side as they're both completely out of mana and out of time. Jamili gets imprisoned. They're trying to slow down his assault. Gorecki's trying to pause the fight. They need 10 more seconds on that touch of karma. Can the boys buy 10 more seconds? Rub Cup's trying to sneak away and drink. He says, okay, if you're going to stall out and play overly defensive, I'm going to regen mana. M2KC might stay in it. Yeah, definitely. And Jamili only has one minute left on his ice block. If they can stall to that point, they're going to be looking very healthy. Full hammer of justice secured on a Gorecki. Can Rossi's potentially find a stab? No, he doesn't have the vanish. So, unfortunate, won't be able to get that follow-up crowd control. Gorecki does get polyed up, but Thugonomics with the reverse magic does find it. Gorecki into the blind now, Trinket's out. So, the next polymorph, there's going to be no reverse magic, potentially no Trinket available, and that is when chun -Li is going to be in a whole lot of trouble with no cut, touch of Karma available. Fortifying Brew already used. Double Ice Sweep coming in from the boys on a Jamili. Temporal Shield deflects this attack. Full Cyclone now secured onto Rub Cub. Nicely done by Gorecki. So he gets into cat form, looking for some damage on a Jamili, but can't afford to stay in cat for too long. Oh, but in a lot of trouble. Huge damage. Thugonomics stalls it out with that darkness. Chun Li needs to hold out. Greggy's got no mana. It's starting to spiral out of control for the boys. Currently tied in first place as M2KC look to overthrow fourth. They're so close, they need to stay on target. Jamili's trying to make his way over. All three members on top of Chun Li. Fist of Fury denies Rosie's, but Jamili's dishing out tons of damage. He gets bashed up. Chun Li retreats, but Greggy is crowd controlled. Chun Li is all alone, so far away from the fight. Rosie's rope cup. Jamili all closing in on him. There's no mana left. There's no cooldowns left. And the rope cup is done. It. The last paladin in the darkness, the last shining light shines bright. And they are going to be able to claw their way to feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for Azeroth.